Hi, this is David speaking. I want to talk about what to do when it feels like we bore people or that we just aren't interesting enough. For example, when I started off, I was sure that for me to be interesting to others, I had to have an interesting life. And I was lucky because I started a company that did really well. I started traveling the world and I was like, man, this is so good. I'm going to be so interesting. Only problem was it just didn't work. People weren't more interested in hearing about my stuff. Maybe the first minute or so, but it didn't make me a more interesting person. And most of all, it didn't make my conversations more interesting. And if you don't believe me, think about, you know, some old relative at a Christmas party who starts talking about his time in the war. And it's interesting the first few minutes or half an hour, but after longer than that, it starts getting annoying. Here's the thing. An interesting life doesn't make our conversations more interesting. That's super not intuitive. So I say it again. An interesting life doesn't make our conversations more interesting because what makes our conversations interesting is the way we make conversations. That's what I'm going to talk about in this video. And we're going to learn from what socially savvy people do to always be able to have interesting conversations, no matter what their life's like or anything like that. So when it comes to interesting conversations, most people talk about facts and opinions, facts and opinions. And that's, that's the way they interact with others. And if we were to look at people's brains in those conversations, they wouldn't be very active. And then there's socially savvy people who have learned that we also want to talk about thoughts and feelings. Not in a flower power way, I'm going to show you what I mean. Let's say we talk about the, something that most people find pretty exhausting to talk about, at least after a while, the American education system. Obviously, there's a lot of facts about it we can talk about. We can talk about how the schools work or don't work and how many schools there are and so on. That's the facts. Then we have the opinions about what I or someone else think has to be done or what should be changed or what we should or not, should not do. Those are the opinions. If we tend to only talk about facts and opinions, people get bored after a while. One problem here is a bias called the false consensus bias. Scientists have discovered that people tend to believe that others agree with them more than they actually do. So when we meet someone, we just automatically assume that that person has the same thoughts and beliefs that we have. When we start talking about our opinions, it often creates a bit of a disconnect because the other person will be like, oh, this isn't really what I think, but it's subconscious or they just, you know, keep smiling and don't say anything about it because you don't want to start a fight with whoever you're talking to. The other problem is facts. If we just talk about facts, we could be replaceable by Wikipedia because we can go there and we can watch a documentary and learn things about that. Plus, when you start talking about facts, it's a little bit like you're lecturing people. Now, socially savvy people switch the conversation into personal mode. Switching into personal mode is something you know if you follow me. It's a super awesome way to make conversations more interesting. And you can do that by shifting over to thoughts and feelings. So maybe if we, again, talk about the education system in the US, maybe I could ask something like, so where did you go to school? You see what I did there? I switched from a factual conversation into a personal question. Or I could be like, yeah, I actually never really liked school because I was so intimidated by everyone there. If I could go through school again with what I know now, it would be amazing. It would be a whole different world. If you start talking about that, the conversation suddenly becomes more interesting for most people. So maybe you come across someone who's super interested in the American school system. I'm not saying that that per se is wrong to talk about. What I am saying is this. If you're a person who often end up in facts and opinions, you want to switch over to thoughts and feelings. How you feel about something, what you think about something, and then ask the other person what they think or feel about something. I'm not talking about some weird psychoanalysis stuff. I'm just talking about slightly personal questions. And what I do is to ask the question, you. So for example, what was school like for you? What was it like for you to grow up in the rural area? How was your teachers? When you ask something with the question you, if we were to put that person in a brain scan, we, were, we would be able to see that, wow, boom, the brain lights up like this. And that is 
interesting for that person. Now we can't just ask people questions about them without sharing a little bit about ourselves. That's why we want to share our thoughts and feelings about something. All right, if you like this video, hit like and subscribe. And if you like what I talk about, you should check out my training. You find it below. It's free. It's all about social interaction, making conversation, feeling confident. If you like this video, you will love that one. See you in the next one.